Did you know? School Sport Victoria offers 650,000 sporting opportunities in 31 different sports. At 10,700 events across the state every single year. That's a lot of kids playing sport. And for over 25 years, the Victorian School Sports Awards have recognised more than 1,500 students, teachers and volunteers for excellence and outstanding contribution to school sport. Now that's a champion effort. Good afternoon and welcome to the Ask SSV show. We've got Melina Ayres with us, who's a W League player and plays for, currently playing for the Melbourne Victory. Uh, well, slightly out of contract right now, but looking to re-sign and she's a superstar for sure. She's come through our Team Vic alumni program and she has many, many achievements under her belt. Melina, welcome. Thanks for having me, Raph. Good to be here. No worries. We'll see how the internet fares where you are. You're working away at Mount Eliza, trying to earn a living. Yep, yeah. It says we've got full bars, so hopefully we're, we're all right. Hopefully, hopefully we're all right. Now, um, look, just want to go through a few of the achievements that you have achieved in your life, and just a few. 2011 uh, Victorian School Sport Awards, you got an award for cricket and you got an award for football soccer in the same year. Yeah, I might have been a bit lucky that year, but it was uh, <laughs> definitely uh, great to get some recognition. Very good. And 2014, you got an, uh, from McKinney, that was the two, 2011 for Murrumbina Primary School and the 2014 was for McKinnon Secondary College in football as well. 2015, you were signed with Melbourne City and you competed as a striker in that team. And then 2016, you also made your first international appearance playing in, playing in Myanmar. And 2017, signed by the Mighty Victory. 2016, Golden Boot, 24 goals. And 2017, National Premier League Golden Boot, 40 goals. When I read that, I had to double check. 40 goals in one season. Yeah, I had a, I had a pretty good team around me. Um, <laughs> yeah, ask Tiff out the artist. She reckoned she got the most assist. So uh, that probably helped out a bit. That is brilliant, mate. Brilliant. 40 goals in one season. Look, out of all those, what was the most rewarding for you? Um, of all the goals? All the... Well, of all, of all the achievements we've talked about, oh. everything, you know, Team Vic experience and, and all of that, what's been the most rewarding for you? Um, I think the first sort of state team I made, that's always pretty special. Um, that was a cricket team. Um, but then, I mean, they're all, they're all pretty special. Um, I've really enjoyed my time. I've enjoyed my time at South Melbourne and, um, and Melbourne City and Melbourne Victory. So, yeah, I don't know. I couldn't really pick one. Very good. Now, we've also um, got some, a video, just a little video here that we're going to show. And this is going to show the highlights of... It only goes for a couple of minutes, a minute and a half, and we'll show some highlights around your game and just to put people in perspective of what you play. Sounds to good. play a positive pass for victory here. Sees Ayres in space and a chance to run at the Newcastle defence. Ayres is going to take on the shot! Melina Ayres! That's what she can do! And it is special once again! With Carly Ress back in Aust. Unbelievable. Jenkins in, she's got Melina Ayres there, and that is the opening goal. Melina Ayres with her first goal for Melbourne Victory this season, puts the home side ahead. Melbourne Victory leading 1-0 at Lakeside Stadium. It goes over the top, and Natasha Dow is there, flicks it round, Ayres again, and she has two. Melina Ayres has a double. Oh, that is an extraordinary way for her to open her account this season. Melina Ayres with a brace here at Lakeside Stadium. That there puts in perspective exactly what happens. Now, we've got a frozen video, but I think you can still hear us. Is that right, Melina? 
Yeah, I can see you. Awesome. Well, this will be ripped onto a podcast later on, so we'll keep going with the interview. Tell us, where did it all start for you? Where did where did this um, sporting finesse start for Melina Ayres? Um, well, if we go right back. When I first started, my parents took me down to um, Glen Ira Soccer Club, and I'd play goal kick there. Um, and then I played there for a few years, and I played with and then at Eastern Lions, and then sort of went from there. And then cricket, I played at Murrumbina um, with the boys again. Um, yeah, and then as soon as I sort of could start doing it with girls teams, I did, which was probably about 14. Very good. Now, you tried out for the Team Vic cricket team and you also tried out for the Team Vic football soccer team. Correct me if I'm wrong, you tried out twice for the football soccer team and weren't selected, but you were selected for the Team Vic cricket team. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I made the cricket team first round. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it took me a couple of years to make you know, the soccer team. Um, Which is, look, it, it makes sense in the sense that for for young people, for 10, 11, 12 year old kids, this is their Olympics, this is their everything. So not getting on is, is pretty pretty tough. Not getting selected is pretty tough. But for a, a person who tried out for the soccer team, didn't get in, and now is playing elite sport, there's a story in that in itself. Yeah, I think it's just the, yeah, don't, don't give up. Um, and yeah, as you get older, you sort of learn, um, better ways of doing things or training and you meet more people and yeah so if you, you stick around you, you um, you're bound to get an opportunity very true now what would you what advice would you give to your 12 year old self now I was thinking about this um, I think probably just not um, try to impress coaches like just play and the rest sort of sorts itself out um, where especially when you're trying out for teams and you want to, you know, you want to get your name out there and um, you might try a bit harder, hard to uh, impress the coaches rather than just, just playing and having fun. Very true, very true. Now, speaking of which, we've got Ruby Gordon, who's going to be joining us very briefly to ask the question and we'll um, get her on board. Ruby, you've joined us now. Now, unfortunately, Ruby, Melina's frozen. It's not the best look for Melina right now, but we'll edit that out. Ruby, you like soccer? Yeah. Excellent. What, what do you call it? Let's settle this argument. Do you call it football or do you call it soccer? Soccer. Soccer. Well, we, uh, we're, we're trying to break that stereotype and trying to call it football. What position do you play? Um... Probably um, centre. Yep. So, so centre forward, you do a lot of running. Well, that's good because Mel also plays, Melina also plays centre forward. So ask your question of Melina. She will be able to hear you. Um, do I send my question to her? Yeah, just ask your question. She'll be able to hear you, no problem. Okay. Um, how do you prepare... Um, before a game day as an elite athlete? I'm not, I'm not picking her up. So how do you prepare for game day as an elite athlete? Um, well, usually we're playing in W League, sort of about four o'clock or like onwards from then. So I sort of just, it's pretty much based around my meals. Um, so say it's a four o'clock game i'll wake up and have um breakfast and then go for a bit of a walk we usually go for a bit of a team walk um if we're away and then come back and eat lunch uh, um quick nap um and then we'll have a pre-match meal or snack usually just some banana or something like that um and then yeah, go to the game. And I don't usually try and get too sort of in the zone because I think if you, uh, for me, the less I think about, the less I think about it, um, the, the more I can just sort of get in the flow of it and not stress myself out. But yeah, I don't really have any uh, rituals or anything. Just, yeah, sort of try and stay relaxed and fuel myself right. 
That sounds good. Ruby, does that answer your question? Yeah. She uh, has some pretty good answers there. Tell us, Melina, when you talk about getting in the zone, what are you talking about? You're talking about the, the super ultra laser focus that you need to set yourself up for in the game? Yeah, I think so. Um, as an example, I guess some of the goals I've scored, I don't remember why I thought to shot them or like actually kicking it. It's just sort of you're in that, that zone that you kind of just know what to do automatically. It just kind of happens. So you can't, I mean, I haven't found a way to actually get into that zone like when I try to, but it just sort of happens. So, um, yeah, I think I just try and not think about it and it kind of happens. Makes sense because especially that goal we just saw and, and that's it. it's actually a bit of a signature move of yours to take a shot from way out like between the halfway line and the top of the box and score. You, I mean, I've been at school sport events when you've been in year 11 or 12 and, and you've taken a shot from the halfway line because the keeper's off their line and you scored, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah I think if they're off their line, you've got to keep them on their toes. <laughs> well, there you go for any keepers listening. Ruby, that's um, some good advice for you to stay in focus and to prep for, for a game day. Have you got one more question? Um... Um... Um, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's let's um keep going with the show and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Ruby. Thank you. Brilliant. That's great, Melina. Now, um, look, we we've talked a little bit about pressure, but when you went in 2016 to compete internationally, how did you cope with the pressure of representing Australia? Um. Yeah, it's definitely. A step up from, I mean, there's pressure in W League, but representing your country is another step up again. And I don't think when I first made the team, I didn't really think about it because I was pretty young and I didn't really feel pressure, I guess. Um, but when I made the under 20s, you know, there's sort of more weight on your shoulders and it's sort of getting closer to, you know, you're going to get it onto a national team camp or. So there is more pressure, and I don't think the tr uh, we did trip to uh, Myanmar, and I don't think I really handled the pressure that well. But what I try to do is, yeah, what well, like I said, just try and I listen to music before the game and try and um, be as relaxed as I can, and just try and play and um, just try and make it simple, like. Um, make the first pass and, you know, make the first tackle, make make sure each touch is good and just trying to focus on the single moment rather than I have to play a really good game. Well, that's good. So you basically what you're saying there is you, if you can get that first tackle or first touch or first shot off and it's good and you can concentrate on that, that tends to ease you into the rest of the game. Is that right? Yeah, it's sort of just a bit of an icebreaker just to, you know, Give yourself that confidence of yeah, I, I can, I can do this. I'm, you know, I'll make this pass, and I'm going to make the next one, and so on. Very good, very good. Now um, we've got some other people that are going to be joining us soon. But um, when someone asks you what sacrifices have you had to make, what would you say? Um, probably my family just putting up with me being tired and grumpy a lot from training. Um, and then, I mean, through school, you miss a lot of, um, you know, hanging out with your friends and, um, yeah, sort of activities at school. And I mean, I miss like the whole end of year 12 because um, we're away. But for me, in the greatest scheme of things, it's, I'm not disappointed. Like, it's disappointing at the time, but it's been worth it to miss things like that. But yeah, some of my, Friends, I feel bad like I couldn't hang out with as much, but um, yeah, I think it's you can't play sport forever. So while I can, I'll you know try and put as much effort into it as I can. 
I guess, you know, saying no to parties, saying no to drinking, all that sort of stuff is, is something that goes with the territory if you're going to represent your country and play at the level that you play. We've got Kathy Matthews who's asked a question via Facebook. Do you have siblings that train with you or compete against you that, that helps, you know, drive you? Um, I have a younger brother, Liam, who's six, uh, 17. Um, but, yeah, we, we used to play in the back yard a lot and um but we don't really play anymore he's probably a bit scared i might not make him or something <laughs> i was about <laughs> to say who uh he's probably not wanting to play because he doesn't want to be beaten by you yeah no nah, he, he plays soccer as well he loves it so but yeah we're just i think we both do it so much that we just get home and want to sit on the couch <laughs> Very good. Now we've got another question that's coming from Ebony Adams. Any long-term goals for you in your soccer career, football career? Um, hi, Ebony. Um, long-term goals. Um, I'm aiming to go overseas at some point. Obviously, now it's a bit, a bit difficult. But um, yeah, play overseas, and obviously, the Matildas is such a. Um, hotly competitive side to get in now so I think that's a, a really good challenge to try and um, to try and get in long term well look I, I don't want to be too biased but I think you've got the goods to make it to the Matildas and, and if there's any a time when women's football is going through the roof or it's going through a golden age it's got to be now like with the Women's World Cup that's just been announced and with Catley, who's just been signed um, overseas with a great contract and Kerr with a great contract. These women who are going before you are certainly paving the way and making a pathway for you and, and for others. Would that be accurate? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember even, they're a couple of years older than me, but I remember when I was first started, there wasn't girls' teams at Glenara, for example, and now there's heaps of girls teams at Glenara and all around um, so it's encouraging to see that yeah how much it's grown since you know since even I was little and um, for the girls before me that have paved the way even more it's um you know we get paid in W League now and a few years ago it was for the love of it pretty much so it's really Very exciting true. to get the World Cup um, in 2023 and I think it'll be yeah, a great spectacle for Australia and New Zealand football. I'm sure you're going to be at every game. We've got, um, a, before we come to Amelia, we've got Amelia who's joined us um, right now. She's We're going to get her question in just a second. But Debbie Wall, I'm not sure if you remember Debbie Wall, but Debbie yep. Wall certainly watched you and championed you from a, a long distance. She she doesn't have a question, but she got a well wish. Congratulations, Melina. You achieved so much and a wonderful role model. Well done and good luck with future plans. So let's move now to Amelia. Amelia, you are joining us from wherever you're joining us. Amelia is from Bentley West Primary School. How are you, Amelia? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for asking. Now, do you enjoy playing football? Yeah, I do enjoy playing it, but I also do do swimming. Yep. So, so tell me, what position do you um, play when you play football? Well, I usually play defence, but hopefully the season starts up again and I would like to try playing midfield a lot more. Very good. Midfielders, they certainly do a lot of the running. So that's uh, good that you want to compete at that level. Now, we don't have Melina's video, but she can um, certainly um, hear you. So go ahead and ask your question, Melina. Well, actually, you answered my question before, but how did you balance You might have to uh, repeat it. Yeah, and right and how did you end up choosing soccer? Yeah, so the, the question from Amelia Mel is, how did you balance... Um, football and all the other sports and what was the other second part of the question Amelia? Well she answered my question which was related to nerves before and I just said how did you choose between them? So well, yeah how did you choose football or soccer as the the sport that you're going to keep going with? Um, well first of all yeah I played 
pretty much every sport under the sun when I was uh, younger. Um, but I ended up with soccer. It's sort of just um, there was one year where I made the Melbourne City team, and it was going to be over summer, so I wouldn't have been able to play cricket. Um, so I sort of thought I'll, I'll give this opportunity a go and um, not play cricket this year. Uh, yeah, that's sort of how it happened, and I've just sort of stuck with it ever since. But yeah, it'll be it'll be fun to have a go in the big bash or something, but might have to <laughs> get a bit of training in before that. Well, Melina, is it one of those things that when when you were growing up and you played every sport, people just would um, lay hands on you real quick because you were so good at every sport? Was that as you were growing up and playing sport and, and becoming so good at many sports, was that a bit frustrating? Um, it's yeah, it's sort of hard to put time into each one, and um, I think sort of Elise Perry was always my idol growing up, um, and you sort of just yeah, she's ended up committing to cricket, and I think like. From when she committed to cricket, she's just like that much better because she's you she can put 100% of the time into it. Um, but yeah, I think when I was younger, it, it was good to ha try everything because then you sort of know which ones you want to do. Um, within reason, obviously, yeah, there's a few coaches and stuff that, you know, want you to play and like basketball and stuff I used to play, but... Yeah, I sort of just had the most fun playing soccer and cricket. So that's what I went with. Very good, very good. Hopefully that answers your question, Amelia. Thanks heaps for joining us over there from Bentley. What are you thanks, doing Amelia. to stay focused during COVID? Well, um, I'm doing well, a lot I'm of working virtual fitness classes um, and practicing and I'm also the front studying with my online, brother. A so I've got a fair bit to do. Um, good. But yeah, it is hard to sort of just putting your head down and working and you can't really, you know, go and hang out with your friends and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to do everything I can to be ready for when, you know, we can play play again. Very true. Now, Amelia, what, what, are you, um, what, are you, what is it that you're doing to stay active, Amelia? Well, I am doing a lot of virtual fit classes and practicing very good hopefully you will be back at training in no time hey thanks he's for joining us we're going to keep going with the interview here so look covid's been one of those things that's sort of you know thrown a spanner in the works um mel what do you try and focus on mentally and physically during this time of isolation um yeah, I sort of, it's been hard training by yourself and whatnot, but um, I think the motivation is to be, yeah, ready for when it's sort of over and like some days, you know, you just feel pretty average and mad at the world. So sometimes you, I'll just have a day off and go and do something fun um, or, you know, hang out with my brother or whatnot. Um, so I think it's just sort of, yeah, about balancing it because you don't want to burn yourself out trying to, you know, train twice a day, every day, a week. Um, and it, because it is hard when there's no sort of end goal. I mean, the NPL here, we were going to start and then it's sort of been pushed back, pushed back. Um, so I think, yeah, sort of taking each day as it comes, but yeah, trying to still get some enjoyment out of it. Very true. Now, if it wasn't for COVID, what would the current month or current week that we're in, what would it look like for you? Um, well, I was planning on trying to get overseas, so <laughs> might have been overseas, but um, nothing cemented. So, yeah, it would have been good to be overseas, but, um, yeah, I guess another few few months of training won't hurt. Very, very true. Tell me, speaking of overseas and, and the deals that Catley and Kerr have just signed up, you know, obviously that's something that you aspire to. 
What do you think needs to happen in our country for more of an equality around women's football, uh, you know, in comparison to men's football? Um, well, in the W League, I think the double headers are really a really, really good um, sort of spectacle for, for us because we get to play before the boys and um, people come early and don't even realise we're playing. So I think the double headers are a really good way of sort of putting both the teams out there, um, the women and the men's team. And it's sort of a lot of people don't know about the W League. So when they're together, it's like, oh, the non victory men have a women's team. Let's go and watch them. So I think it's small things like that that I think are pretty could be pretty simple to do that have a big impact. And that's, you know, more from a scheduling perspective. I, I think that's so true. If, you know, you, if you had the ear of FFA or FV or whoever, and you could say one thing to them to, to help them get women's sport up and running, what, what advice would you give them? Um, I think probably almost like give us a go sort of thing. Like if you take the time and so I guess the money um, and put it into the women's program, um, a lot can happen. And as we've seen with the Matildas, since they've had, you know, a bit of exposure and they've done really well and more money's been put into them, they're like in the top 10 teams in the world. And exactly. So little time. And I think that's sort of a pretty good example of what can happen when, yeah, sort of time, money and efforts put into um, sport. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing there. Now, what would a typical training week look like for Melina Ayres as you're like, you know, approaching semi-finals, grand final kind of thing. So at peak form, what would a training week look like? Um, well, the, I'll go on the uh, semi-final this year. We, I think we played uh, the last round of the season on the Sunday or the Saturday. So we usually have a recovery day post-game and then... We do a, a harder session, usually on a Tuesday, and um, like a conditioning session. And then Thursday, Friday, we, we'd have Wednesday off. Thursday, Friday, to do some tactical, tactical um, sessions. So, uh, yeah, team plays and set pieces, things like that. And then depending on when we play, that, that could be um, if Saturday's Sounds good. Now, I've got a, in there as well. a question that's come in by Taylor McLernan, who's uh, submitted the question and just wants us to ask it on her behalf. What's your best advice for a young player who has a dream to play in the W League? And she's from Western Port Secondary College. Um, thanks for your question. I think as much as everyone says have fun, I think when... In a team, and I always remember South Melbourne as I've had the most fun probably playing there because um, we're all sort of on the same page about things. And I mean, every team I've played in, the more fun you have and the more everyone's sort of um, on the, focusing on the same goal of, of winning or whatever it is you want to achieve, it's, I think you play as well as you can. So to relate that to like an individual it's just thinking about yeah each moment and okay i'll make this pass and then the next pass uh like i said before so i think just try not to think too too broad like obviously the end goal is to play w league or matildas but think about what you can do in say your game on the weekend or what you want to improve on or what am i going to do this training that maybe i didn't do so well last training session things like that yeah to break it down smaller i think helps build the bigger picture 
Very good. And, and I'd imagine, I, I mean, I don't know, but I'd imagine that playing, the higher you get in terms of playing, the, the closer to elite sport, the less it's, uh, the harder it is to be in it for fun. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, the fun. The fun part is in those elite teams is when, yeah, everyone's wanting to be on the same path to winning and some of the yeah the best days or the best times I've had is when you know winning the W League or when you know everyone's put in so much hard work and um and it just yeah it feels so good to win and have all that hard work pay off. Very good. Now, speaking about training, we've got um, Catherine who was going to join us live, but there might be just a technical issue that we're experiencing with getting her on. But her question is, what food do you eat before you train or compete? Um, it depends. So training's a bit different. Um, probably just try and have... With Victory this year, we were training really early, so I generally only have like a banana or some toast before it. But then I think uh, after I'd have like a, a protein shake or um, just try and have basically yeah, like protein carbs and um, heaps of veggies and stuff. Um, but for games, sort of more important before, like I think about what I'm going to eat for games probably two or one or two days before so um generally the night the day before or the two days before i'd eat probably more than more than i would normally um to sort of carb up a little bit um as people put it and then game day usually i'll have a bigger breakfast and then um sort of a lighter lunch and then just some fruit Oh, I'm like a banana, I like to have bananas. Probably like one or two hours before the game and just heaps of water. Very good, that sounds good. Now we've asked that question quite often and bananas seem to be getting a high mention. So maybe the sales are going up at Coles or Woolworths, we don't know. Hey, um, Kathy Matthew has said um, quite, you know, she's given you a well wish and thank you for your time today. Great listening to what you have to say. You have so many girls can relate to where you have been and what you are trying to, where you're trying to head. Uh, we've oh, got one from thanks. Kylie. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, we got one from Kylie Crowley. Do you know Kylie Crowley? It seems she knows you. Yeah. She's yes, I play here. cricket hey, with Mel. Kylie. Hi, Mel. I hear you've got a great 21st pitcher that was playing soccer. Where does that live now? But um, she's also asked, do you still play cricket? <laughs> um, all right, thanks for the present, Krause. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's in my room. I don't have a pool room yet, so uh, it's just up in, <laughs> in the room. Um, yeah, it, was, it was a great picture, thank you. And, um, I mean, when cricket's back on, maybe I'll have to come down to Melbourne again and whack a few around the Albert. Sounds good. Now, we're just about to wrap up. For those of you who are joining us, we've switched off Melina's camera because the internet's struggling where she is down there at Mount Eliza. Um, so... Mel, if I was to ask you this, how has sport set you up in life, for life in general? What would you say? Um, well, I think most of my, my friends um, are from sport. Um, most of my memories are probably from sport. Um, and I think you just learn a lot of things along the way that, um, you know, sort of um, endeavour and not giving up um, and even just um, communication skills, things like that, um, communicating with teammates and coaches and um, learning to respect those people and, um, yeah, I think a lot of values that probably I hold now are um, due to sport. Very true, very true. That's um, that's a great answer. Thanks for sharing. Now, where to next? Like, I understand we're in lockdown and hoping we'll come out of lockdown soon, but 
Where to next for Molina? What's the short term goal? Like, where do you want to head? Um, well, as soon as I can, I'd love to get overseas and have that experience of playing overseas. Um, I think it's, it'd be really valuable for my soccer career and also just life experiences, um, going out and seeing new things and, and, and that. Um, but also, yeah, I just want to keep improving and if I can't go overseas for now, then just focus on what I can do. Um, in lockdown and just keep getting fitter and um, potentially have a little little season with South Melbourne um, and then yeah see where where the uh, world takes us very good now you've been signed at South Melbourne Football Club the former South Melbourne Hallas they're a fantastic club and I know they really adore you as a player and as a person off the field as well Do you, you mentioned you enjoy playing there is that something that you're looking forward to in the very short term yeah for sure I've um yeah I love my time at South Melbourne and um yeah we've sort of got a few of the girls back together from when we won it a few years ago so yeah it was really exciting getting back into training with them for a few weeks but um yeah so really hoping we'll get somewhat of a season but yeah just don't know brilliant hey thanks heats for joining us we know you're on your lunch break there um at work and i appreciate you giving us your time and we really look forward to seeing your name up in lights and and i don't say that lightly melina i i do think you're an exceptional young woman who's got a lot of talent and a very bright future and for us at school sport we love the fact that you've come through the school sport program but more importantly we want to see you go on to bigger and better things so we're going to do our part to continue to champion you both as a player and just as a, a really kind human being so keep up the good work know that we are right behind you in everything you do and we just think you're amazing thank you thanks for having me on yeah i think the school sport victoria has really given myself and a lot of girls a lot of opportunities so thanks for your work as well and thanks for having me on no problem thanks heaps now we're gonna for those of you listening we're gonna rip this into a podcast it'll be up in the next hour so please feel free to uh listen to that and apologies for the video but that's just sometimes how technology works but the uh the voice and the interview and hearing melina give the answers is the most important aspect of this thanks heaps melina we're going to see you a little bit later on for those of you joining us next week we've got annabelle smith who's an olympic diver um, so a bit of a different spin on football today but uh, annabelle smith's got some great uh, answers that she'll be giving to young people listening melina Thanks for joining us. Back to work for you, unfortunately, but we hope to see you uh, yep. very soon back on the field and we'll be there cheering you on. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. No worries, buddy.